So I've watched a couple anime this year, and we're about five months in, six months in almost into this year, and I was just thinking, what has been the best episode of anime to come out this year? You know, I'm a mainstream guy, I am, I will admit it, you know, I watch a lot of the mainstream shows, and I really don't dive into the Crunchyroll catalog like that. I used to back when I had a lot of time, but now I don't have a lot of time like that, so I really try to focus on the shows that more people are talking about just so I could stay up to date on a lot of the shit that's happening. And I've seen a couple episodes this year, specifically this year actually, that have really just been absolutely mind-blowing. Like some of the best episodes of anime I've watched, I would have to say. You know, like last year we had Tokyo Avengers, had some really good episodes, we had Baryan mode Naruto. Um, we had a couple episodes last year that were solid, but like there have been a couple episodes this year that just have blown like everything I've kind of seen previously with a lot of these anime out of the water. I'm not gonna lie, I'm really not gonna lie. Just to name some of the shows, I mean, Ranking of Kings, Shoko Tensei, Spy Family. One Piece, Attack on Titan, Demon Slayer. There have been some episodes within that little basket of shows that have been incredible. Incredible. So I'm, I'm going to try and just talk about it and really try to figure out which one from this year so far, where we sit right now, which one I enjoyed the most, which one is my favorite episode of the year so far. So I'm just going to really... Uh, Mushoku Tensei, let me just start with that. I mean, episode 21. Episode 21 when the dragon guy pulled up or whatever his name is i mean just because an episode is animated good doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be the best episode right because story obviously is a huge part and i feel like him pulling up was just such an impactful moment in the mushoku tensei story in the anime so far because you they really haven't been faced with any threat you know rudy's been broken since day one he's been absolutely nuts eris is great Rui Jerd was obviously their like protector so like they never really were faced with anything bad and then they pull up on this and this guy literally is so strong that he makes them break up their group it makes Eris go on a self-cleansing power trip journey and now Rudius is left alone Rui Jerd does whatever he wants to do so this is really impactful for the story you know and the animation behind it still was great. You know, Mushoku Tensei is animated really flawlessly, honestly. That was kind of a bar. But just the whole sequence of him pulling up and then you really see the pain in Rudy's eyes. You know, like you really see that pain. You really see that suffering. And you really see like that they are in a fucking pickle. And it is not looking good. And you sort of feel... Because when an anime can make you feel like there's genuinely no hope for a character or there's no there's nothing they could do about it that's you know that's some shit that's like it's a hard thing to really do with a lot of these shows because a lot of these shows get to be a little bit predictable and like with this episode specifically of Mushoku Tensei I really I really didn't know how they were getting out of this was it kind of a cop-out it kind of just seemed like a cop-out I didn't know what the fuck happened but it still wasn't that big of a deal to where it would fuck up the episode so I mean that was a great episode all in all but then we have shows like Spy Family in episode four of Spy Family, and I'm not fully caught up on it, but episode four of Spy Family, I mean, it's like, how can you make a show that has a great amount of action, but in such like a real life way with comedy that just shoots out the fucking roof? Like, I mean, I don't laugh at anime, but Spy Family, for some reason, it has me laughing. Anya's mannerisms and just the faces she makes and the guys talking about elegance and shit and how like Lloyd and Yor get their clothes dirty trying to help the kid and then he's he's like damn like how are they gonna get out of this shit and like out of all the things I'm not thinking they're gonna have an extra pair of clothes but then they're like we came specifically prepared for this moment and then they pull out a whole new attire and then it happens again and they pull out a whole new attire and it's just like the satirical aspect of that show really had me going not necessarily again in an action way even though spy family does have action like episode five visually nuts but just the whole wholesomeness of the show it keeps me engaged the whole time like attack on Titan, for example you could have a top tier attack on titan episode but there are still moments in that episode where like 
it's kind of slow and there's downtime. Same thing with One Piece. But Spy Family so far, I've been really engaged in a lot of these episodes just consistently. You know, I really haven't been bored. I, I haven't had any boredom with the show, and I think that's something that's very important. And that's why episode four, which is currently my favorite episode from the series, was one of my favorite episodes this year. Now, would I say it's better than the Mushoko episode? Just off the bat, not even looking at other shows? It might be. It might be for me. It might be for me. It was just a very complete episode. So I would probably say that the Spy Family episode is better than that Mushoko episode just a bit. A very tad bit. And then I know I said Ranking of Kings, but I don't really have any episodes in my head other than when um, Dida got his body taken over. I mean, that was... The, the thing with Ranking of Kings, it's just like... It's such a different take on anime, to me at least. And it is very, very different. And the story is very, very engaging. And it's sort of like, at least right now to me, in a Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood type of position... Because it's like Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood does everything so well, everything so perfect. And while it does have those really great moments, there's nothing that's like monumental in the show yet, right? There's nothing that's monumental. Everything seems very, very great A tier. But there is no S with a Ranking of Kings episode that I can think of right now. Like there's been A, A plus, and it's been consistent greatness. But there has not been perfection yet for me. That's how I see it, right? So, I can't think of a Ranking of Kings episode off the bat, but obviously if I can't, I would have to say that there's not, that while there have been great episodes, there's not one that's like my favorite. But now if we're looking at the big three of this year, right, because I had to talk about those like three other shows because they have been shows that have been in my rotation all year, but Attack on Titan, Demon Slayer, One Piece. One Piece, we have 10, 15, 10, 17. Demon Slayer, we have episode 10. And then Attack on Titan, we have 78, 79, 80. I mean, like, holy shit. And I'm not counting out Demon Slayer's episode, like, 6 through 9. But, I mean, you, we all know episode 10, what the fuck that did. You know what I'm saying? So, if we're just looking at Attack on Titan first off the bat, 78, 79, 80. Episode 78, when Eren got his shit. This is gonna be spoiler territory. So, I mean, I think that was kind of a given. But if you're still here and you haven't seen Demon Slayer, One Piece, Attack on Titan, not caught up, obviously click off. But episode 78, Phase Gabby pulling up on Eren again. I mean, that was something that was just so, 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 so shocking to me at the time. It was so shocking because I genuinely thought he was done. Like, I didn't know how he was coming back from that, you know, and obviously the whole memory scene in the next episode and then him getting the spinal cord attachment thingy whatever that all happened in their world within like two seconds but to us obviously it was like two weeks um, of real time but still seeing like falco i think he got transformed in that episode if i recall correctly zeke like kind of reward and then aaron was just sprinting and then he got his head shot clean off clean off man it was i really couldn't even i remember watching it if you've seen the reaction I didn't even have words for it. I really didn't because it was just, it was literally something else. And I didn't think it could honestly get better. I didn't think it could get better. But then episode 79 came out. And I have, I haven't been left relatively speechless from an anime. You know, I've screamed, I've laughed, I've said, oh my goodness. But I haven't been left speechless in a long time. I mean, with Tokyo Avengers Finale, for example, if you have seen it, if you haven't seen it, click off with the whole Kisaki thing saying my hero. <clears throat> I was sitting there speechless. I was. I really was. Or with episode 12, too. Episode 12 left me speechless as well. Those both, those two episodes in Tokyo Avengers, they were both very, very like, what the fuck just happened? But I mean, not on the level of this. Because this is years of buildup, might I add. This is 2012 to now. This is 10 whole years. This is a decade. And then when you see, and I'm surprised I didn't even get this spoiled for me because I had people saying Aaron was the villain, but I was like, what the fuck does that even mean? I didn't even know what that meant until this. I was like, wow, what is this? Like 
when they said he would be the villain i didn't expect it to be in that fashion i expected it to be more so of a thing where it's like he just him and zeke kind of did their thing and then ran rampant that's kind of what i thought you know so him betraying zeke and then us finding out that he's been pulling the strings since the first episode i mean what the fuck like you know what i'm saying like what the fuck like i was just in shock i couldn't even speak and then episode 80 was just a ridiculous episode in the fact that we saw ymir's backstory and saw him transform and that whole animation sequence was insane but i think story-wise and just the whole season of attack on titan season four part two i think 79 may have been the best episode I think it I think it was I think it was I really don't think you're getting any other story in an episode of that season like that that was just oh my gosh and that like the little scenes they were using like with the younger Aaron like having that mad face and then the lightning jolts and all that shit it was like kind of eerie but it was like so ridiculous and then him standing there like yeah I run this shit bitch I was like okay stop it you know <laughs> I was, I was just stop it but yeah i'm getting congested as i speak but i think that was the best attack on titan episode hands down hands down i would compare it to episode 10 and the spy family episode but i'm just gonna talk about one piece really quick because i have to decide because there's two things right episode 10 15 we got the beginning of root piece and you see luffy quite possibly pull off a celestial dragon tier type of punch in terms of the satisfaction on kaido but it's like with the celestial dragon you weren't you did not ha i think in terms of a singular punch i think that was the best animation like the fire that was going on and him just like boom launching it into him clocking him and then him being like damn like that actually hurt i mean that was like we've been waiting for that you know we've been waiting for that that was the episode that we have been waiting for for a long ass time and episode 10 16 was good but episode 10 17 yeah i don't even know why i'm debating this with the one piece shit episode 10 17 was the best episode of one piece that has come out and i was saying about i was saying that about 10 15 but then 10 17 came out and it was constant it was constant movie tier animation constant like it did not stop at all for anything and we had every character getting involved that was on the roof every character we had luffy we had law we had zoro killer kid big mom kaido duking it out for 20 minutes straight balls it's just it was the best fight sequence i have seen currently in animated one piece it was the best one it was the best one and now that i've spoke about this spy family is just not on the tier of these three episodes it's not it's a great great show and it gives me different emotions than these three episodes this year but it's like i just don't know what the fuck i don't know what to say and now i'm stuck i am i'm stuck because we have demon slayer which is still quite possibly the best animated episode I have ever seen and then we have attack on titan which is quite possibly the greatest plot twist in an anime episode i have ever seen right but then we have one piece which is quite possibly the greatest anime episode i have ever seen in terms of not only the animation but just the story content that has been building up for the last 20 something years you know so they bring different things to the table and i have to think of my overall enjoyment i reacted to all three of these episodes and i would have to assume that a solid portion of the people watching this video have seen at least a couple of those reactions to these three specific episodes and with demon slayer there was it was yes obviously it was story right but this was just them fighting a demon having to beat the demon with top tier animation top tier animation that's really all it was but it was done so flawlessly i didn't even have words it just kept getting better and better as the episode progressed attack on titan obviously the animation's not even a factor in this episode it was just story content in general and if if i'm looking at one piece because i hold one piece on such a higher tier than demon slayer i may have to pick the one piece episode over the demon slayer episode 
I'm going to rank these top three because, okay, I'm going to rank them. I'm going to rank them. And I may have to say that it goes Demon Slayer, Attack on Titan, One Piece. I think One Piece episode 1017 may have been the best episode of anime that has released this year. I'm not going to lie. Am I over-exaggerating? I don't think so. Attack on Titan is right there, though. But Demon Slayer is all... Oh, fuck, man. Oh, my gosh. Let me go refresh my memory on the Demon Slayer and One Piece animation. Because Attack on Titan, I already know the story. Like, what happened in the episode and what the fuck was going on. But let me refresh my memory. Okay, so I refreshed my memory. And I think I, I will have to give it to One Piece. I think I will. You know, Demon Slayer, what a fucking fight. And the choreography and everything that was going on in that episode and seeing Tandro get his little Demon Slayer Mark thing and just like everything that was going on. It was just as a, my favorite word in the last like two days monumental. It was just, oh man. But there was something about One Piece that I was anticipating and it just blew my expectations out the water. You know, because I expect, I expect things from Demon Slayer. And now while Demon Slayer did exceed my expectations in terms of just how the episode was going to play out, you expect animation that good from Demon Slayer, you know, but I didn't expect One Piece to get to that tier. I'm taking because I personally, I like the way One Piece is animated a little bit more than I like the way Demon Slayer is animated. That's not to say that Demon, because Demon Slayer all in all has the best animation in the game consistently. Consistently. In terms of consistent animation, the best in the game. But, I mean, Toei's fight, it just had a different feeling. It had a different feeling. Demon Slayer was a lot, oh, I'm thinking because I keep thinking of the scene with Tengen and Gyutaro going back and forth and it was just I've never been that hyped though that's ah oh, I guess I have you know what I'm gonna leave it to the comments I'm gonna leave it to the comments okay I'm gonna leave it to the comments I keep going back and forth mentally even with the Attack on Titan episode because like I feel like I should just put that dead center in the middle but then I'm like should I put it in three or should I just put it in one I don't know so out of those three episodes what do y'all boys think Demon Slayer episode 10, season 2, One Piece episode 10, 17, and Attack on Titan episode 79, rank them in order this year from best to worst, and just because it's number 3 doesn't mean it's ass, because they're all the best episodes this year. I just genuinely could not, I cannot think of it. I, I really want to give the edge to One Piece, I, and I feel like I'm going to when I have more time to think. But this is just hard, man. It really is. It really is. So put that in the comments. I think that's going to be it. And yeah. Subscribe to the channel. Road to 5K. Basically right there. I'm just trying to go crazy. You know. So on to the next one. You know what time it is. And yeah.